Hello, my name is Dan Mergner. I'm a registered respiratory therapist. It brings me great honor and pleasure to work with Dr. Patterson and the group that I work with, with the population of patients that I work for. Today I want to talk to you about invasive ventilation. If you've seen the previous video on non-invasive ventilation, this is the counterpart, invasive ventilation. What is invasive ventilation? It's when a patient has a tracheostomy placed in their trachea or their windpipe, and the ventilator is thus connected to that windpipe. The ventilator is going to help the patient to breathe at a normal, restful breath. At this point in time, it takes over most of the breathing for the patient. Patients on ventilators can still do many things. Ventilators can be affixed to back of powered wheelchairs. Patients can still go to the movies with caregivers or families. But it is known at this point in time that a little bit more care is needed. There are several alarms that go off with the ventilator that are going to alert me to certain things. One of the alarms is going to alert me. The patient has become disconnected. When a patient becomes disconnected, this is obviously a deadly scenario. The alarm will continue to beep until I've rectified the problem. The second scenario I see a lot with patients is a patient gets a high pressure or a kinking of the tube or hose. This kinking of the tube or hose can cause many problems and should be immediately rectified. Working the ventilator should only be done by a qualified caregiver, respiratory therapist, nurse, or physician. But it should also be known this is not a machine you should be afraid of. Ventilators have alarms that will tell us if the patient stops breathing, breathes too shallowly, too fast, or the aforementioned comes off of high pressure limits. Thank you.